Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. So this is the second part of just me wrapping my head around how to do fourth axis machining on the Tor mock with my newly purchased micro arc. And again, what we're going to go over here is how to make this very simple part. It's not a matter of the speeds and feeds really. What I'm trying to do here because this is so simple is just get comfortable with moving the A axis and being able to you know, run a, a tool path on all of the faces and just get comfortable with fourth axis machining before I try to do anything too crazy. So we'll go into some of the cam, but it's really not an in-depth cam tutorial as really it is just something to do that will easily get you more comfortable with doing fourth axis machining. <clears throat> so if you watch the machine, the machining at the end on the tour mock, you'll notice I'm going rather slow and I cut air in places, etc. And again, that's just for me to get used to fourth axis machining. So one thing I did want to mention here before we begin. So if you run into a problem where you are not able to post your G code for the rotary, what we need to do is if we go into post process, you'll notice there is a rotary table axis. And so for me, it's X, but by default, it's set to no rotary. And so if it's set to no rotary and you try to post process your G code, or if you try to post process and generate your G code, it will give you an error. So uh, look out for that. Make sure you have the correct axis for your rotary set. So we'll go ahead and click out of that. And so with that being said, what we'll do now is just go and walk through the tool pass to make this simple part and kind of describe some of the issues that I had and what I needed to wrap my mind around. So I hope this helps. And so the simple part that we're making, we are just going to rotate the A axis and face all of the faces of the part. And then we're going to do a 2d contour where we would do a sort of a part off operation where we would just leave some tabs. So let's show that. So we'll click on that tool path where we just leave, would leave three tabs. So that way we could break the part off when we're done. So again, here, it's not to necessarily go through speeds and feeds, but just to kind of understand and wrap our head around how we would do this in Fusion 360. Again, because as you'll see here in a minute, as I walk through this, it's not as intuitive as three axis machining. So if we go into our first facing tool path, and what we're interested here is not necessarily speeds and feeds, it's literally the, the geometry tab is what we're going to be focusing on. It's very similar to a three axis machining operation for our first face, right? We're just going to face the top. So there's really nothing to see here, however, where it gets interesting is when we go to the next set of facing operations where we have to rotate our A axis. And so if we click on facing two, for example, what we would do is again, go to the geometry page and what we do is select tool orientation. So what I'm going to do is just unselect that for now, just so that everyone can sort of get an idea of how I wrap my head around doing this. So one of the confusing things is Fusion doesn't rotate the A axis for you. So what I found helps me is if I go here to the cube and I simply rotate the fixture, how it would be in the machine. So if I was machining the top part of my material, I would be the, the fourth axis and the fixture would be in this orientation. So let me orbit so we can see that better. So what we would do after we manually orbit it ourselves so we can sort of visualize is we would go ahead and click on tool orientation and then we would go to select the Z and X axes. And what we really want to do here is again, visualize the part on the machine in the fourth axis. And we want to make sure our axes line up 
with how they would be on the machine. So in my case, since my micro arc is on the left side of the table, Z is up, Y is forward, and X is to the right. And we're always going to be at the center of our part or on the A axis center of rotation. All right, so let's go ahead and just do another example of that. So let's say now we just machined the top face and now we want to do the back face. So if we go ahead and we double click on the next tool path, again, we go to the geometry tab. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to pretend that this hasn't been selected. And so we haven't done any rotation yet. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my fixture the way that it would be, sorry, on my machine. And then I'm just going to orbit so I can get a better view here. Okay, there we go. So what we would do is, again, just click Tool Orientation and then make sure our axes are pointed in the correct direction for our machine. So again, for me, Z is up, Y is forward, and X is to the right because my micro arc is on the left side of my table. So that's essentially all there is to it in terms of just rotating our A axis to each side so that we can machine it. So what I wanted to go over next, so let's go back to our home view, is how we would essentially remove the part or break the part off after finishing machining it. So what I have here is a 2D contour, and what we're doing is we're just leaving a series of tabs, and then we'll use those tabs as sort of breakaway material at the end of the machining operations before we remove our part. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click on this toolpath. And again, we're going to go into the geometry tab and we're going to enable tabs. And there are a couple parameters that we need to consider here. One is the tab width and the tab distance. So in, for this particular simple part, I thought three tabs was plenty. So I have the tab distance set to three fourths of an inch. However, if I was to reduce that, for example, we would get more tabs. So let's go ahead and put that back to three quarters of an inch, just because I think three tabs are plenty. The next thing we need to consider is the tab height. So during my first test case, I made the tab height too much which is really the thickness of the tab and it made it difficult for me to break the part away. So you need to use some snips and sort of clip the tab so you can remove the part. So if you want to make it easy to sort of just bend the part and break it off, I reached out to the Facebook group and I received suggestions somewhere between 10 thousandths to 15 thousandths. So that's what I'm going to try on my next run to go ahead and do the tabs and make sure that I can indeed, just by using my hand, reach in and break the part away. Okay, so that's how we would do the part off or we would machine the back contour of our part with tabs when we're finished. The other thing I wanna mention here that was a little confusing to me is if we, let me just orbit a little bit so we can see the back contour here. So let me deselect the contour so you can see what I mean here. So normally when I was doing three axis machining, we would just simply click here. However, we don't want to do that because if we simply click the contour, it's going to go all the way around the part, which we don't want. We only want the back side. So to do that, what you do is you just go to chain and instead of close chain, you go open chain and then select the, the contour you want. And this time it's only going to machine the back. So I'm just going to click OK and click OK again. And there is our toolpath generated with our tabs. <clears throat> so that's sort of it for the machining side of things. Again, this is just a very simple part, not worried about speeds and feeds taking it nice and slow, just making sure we can rotate our axes and machine all the sides of our part without crashing. So to me, that was a good stepping stone to doing more complex parts, which we will do in the future. The other thing I want to mention here is that you want to make sure to 
prep your material, at least on the side that is going in the vice jaws, right? You want to make sure that the backside is nice and flat and fits inside of your soft jaws because, again, everything is based on the center of your material. In my case, I went ahead and prepped both the front and back face of the material before inserting it into the jaws. The other thing that we're going to want to do is you'll notice it's not shown here in Fusion, but if you're using a self serving vise, there's, uh, at least in my case, there's some indication of where the center of the jaw is. There's a little zero at the center. And so what I did is with my calipers, I went ahead and measured the width of my stock and then marked the center and I lined the center of my material up with the center of the jaws before I tightened them. So that's sort of how I aligned my piece of material into the vise. So again, I hope that helps. And now what we're going to do is switch over to PathPilot and really go into the details of probing and setting up the A-axis center of rotation. So let's uh, head on to that and I hope this helps. All right, so now we begin machining on the Tormach. And so here, we're just doing the first facing operation. Again, we're going nice and slow just to make sure we can rotate the A-axis without crashing into our part or into our vise or anything of that nature. And so what you'll see here is we finish the operation and now we go ahead, and move out of the way and rotate the A-axis and then start facing the next side of our part again you see me cutting air and that's just because this is a very simple and crude test just to prove to myself that i can indeed do fourth axis machining before you know trying to do anything crazy and remove too much material at one time etc so hopefully this helps again it's going to be very simple and repetitive where we just rotate and face the parts maybe you find the contour operation at the end a little interesting but that's about it again we're just going to highlight where the a-axis rotates and then just go through all of the facing operation so try to bear with me here try to stick around to the end thanks again All right, so now we do the 2D contour and really just leave tabs so we can break the part away when we're done. I'm using a quarter inch tool with an inch and a half flute length. So I do get some chatter. I think in the future, I'll use a tool with a one inch flute length instead of one and a half inch. So that's it guys. I hope all of this helped. I know it took me a while to understand fourth axis machining and I'm still learning. So let me know if you have any comments or suggestions.